Aston Rowant Nature Reserve in the Chilterns in Oxfordshire. And may I say, it's a beautiful place. Well, it's a beautiful day to start off with. Beautiful chalk and grasslands here, which, when you look closer, has a huge diversity of different plant species. Probably my favourite creature that lives around here is another little insect. Now, the beetles are not only the world's most successful pop group, but also the world's most successful animals as a whole. Well, insects, of course, obviously rule the world, but out of all those insects, the order Coleoptera, the beetles make up the most diverse set of um, species, the most, the most specious order. And it's one very unique beetle which lives around here, um, which is particularly special. Um, and it's one which you may not consider to be a beetle. It's the glow worm. And that's what we're aiming to see today. It's just coming on to dusk, so let's walk on and see if we see any action. Right, so at quarter past ten now, surprisingly quite light for quarter past ten, but significantly darker than it was earlier, and we've just found our first glowworm. If you come down here, it's just there. I'm just going to get it off. Stand, and if I just turn... Oh, where is it? There it is. Okay, I'm just going to turn this light off a second, um, so you can fully appreciate its glow. Can you see that green light? Beautiful lime green light. So all the ones that glow are the females, and that's quite surprising in general um, biology. Usually, um, using the laws of behavioural ecology, um, it's usually the males that are more flashy and extravagant, and it's the females that choose the best males, the better quality males. But here it's the complete reversal it seems, because it's the females that are trying to attract the males in using that glow. The males are far more beetle-like. This, you can see why it's called a glowworm by looking at this, because it doesn't look very beetle-like. It's all segmented, um, hasn't got the key features of most of the coleopterans. The males are much more like a standard beetle. Um, so they'll be doing this for a few weeks in early July, uh, mid-July, late June, that sort of thing. And their only goal in life at the moment is to find a male, and have some good rumpy pumpy, and lay eggs and die. Because neither of them, neither the male or the female, are eating at this time. It's their only goal in life is to mate. The, um, the larvae on the other hand are big killing machines. They're ferocious predators. They'll guzzle up snails, slugs far bigger than they are by injecting them with an enzyme which turns the whole of their body into liquid so they'll just lap it up like a milkshake. They're ferocious predators. But these completely harmless to anything living. Um, the whole enzyme reaction is actually quite interesting and has quite a few interesting applications. It's an enzyme reaction, as you'd expect, because most biological reactions do involve enzymes. So the enzyme is luciferase, and the substrate is um, luciferin. And that's interesting, because it's being used by molecular geneticists, believe it or not, as a useful marker in molecular biology. Um, but I'm going to put this guy back now, and let's see how many more we can see. Right, we've come to the end of our wondrous glowworm hunting night and we saw a grand total of 12 glowworms, which is all right, but not quite as good as we'd expect. But something is something. We fully appreciated what a marvelous and fascinating creature and unique um, insect the glowworm is. So that's all we need. We've got great views. I mean, what's there to complain about? Right, time to go to bed. Good night.